So good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Alex, I'm based, in here, I'm based here in Exeter, and this afternoon I'm going to be talking to you about my work, uh, mostly transforming this into the for Rhodesperidium toroidoides. So Rhodesperidium toroidoides is a red Pisidium mice yeast, and it has two features making it really exciting for biodiesel production. So it, it's oleaginous, um, and can accumulate lipids up to some 75% of its dry biomass. Uh, and this is a uh, sort of mild red stain one that sort of Carrie sort of showed us this morning. So you can really see massive amounts of lipid in, in this, this chat. Um, and the lipids accumulated are rich in 16 and 18 uh, hydrocarbon fatty acids, which are brilliant for production of biodiesel. Uh, as well as this, it can metabolize that the 5 and 6 carbon sugars release from hydrolysis of lignin cellulose and biomass. And it is quite resistant to the, the growth inhibitors released during this process that Vadasa mentioned uh, yesterday. Um, so, like I said, what I'm trying to do is, is mostly trying to transform this organism. Now, if you go to the register and transform, uh, type in uh, transformation of rose cream toroidoids into Google, apparently I'm about 30 years behind the curve. Um, but here in Exeter and elsewhere, a lot of work was put in trying to repeat this, this work. Um, and unfortunately, we, we, we couldn't, this, this couldn't, <coughs> no, this, the, this data can be repeated. Um, a lot of work was put in trying to, sort of other methods for transformation, and trying to gene gun it to just to throw off trophic mutants, uh, just looking for transient expression. None of this worked. Um, so, yeah, not, not, couldn't get any transformation. Uh, however, late 2013, uh, a paper was, was published demonstrating Agrobacterium tumefaciens mediated transformation in this organism. And that's where, I, I'm, I, so that's where I'm picking up from in my work, <coughs> sort, of sort of repeating this work, and now it's sort of expanding on this work, trying to develop a, a toolbox for manipulation of rose and throloides. So, just, just a brief introduction to, to Agrobacterium mediated transformation. As a system very commonly used in, in plants, but not so much in, in yeast. Uh, so the way it works is you have a binary vector, this plasmid here, um, and in this you have a tDNA region flanked by a left, left border and right border. Uh, you transform this plasmid into agrobacterium. You then mix your agrobacterium in yeast uh, under conditions that mimic uh, plant wounding. And then if all goes to plan, um, the, ag the agrobacterium passes the tDNA region to the yeast. Uh, the yeast says ambassador spoilers um, and integrates the tDNA into the into the, the yeast genome. Um, so, in order for a, a transformation to work, we need a system for, for selecting for transformers. So, like I said, we don't as I said earlier we don't have autotrace, so we've gone with um, dominant selection. Um, as per the, the Chinese paper that originally demonstrated. Um, uh, Agrobacterium tumefaciens mediated transformation of various really used hydromycin, but we've also used tried a G418 and gentamicin. So the first thing you have to do is just sort of check uh, these antibiotics can kill various brilliant correlators. We just did a quick kill curve and you can see uh, the various brilliant all dead at sort of concentrations of 20, uh, 10 or 20 uh, micrograms per, per mil in, in the case of both the antibiotics. Um, one of the problems with working for is brilliant, however, is the very GC rich nature of the genome. And this is, this is represented uh, in the codon usage uh, of the genes in this organism. So this, uh, this, this chart here shows comparative codon usage of three, three yeasts, rhodosporidium in red, uh, Debromyces hansei in blue, and uh, cryptoconsumia forms in green. As you can see, that the rhodosporidium toroloides has extremely skewed codon usage. Um, so sort of almost exclusive use of, of cheese and seeds at the, the wobble position. Um, so once I took my marker genes, I, I nailed them into a, a plasma of uh, my um, binary vector backbone. I used a uh, rhodes and toroloides and GPD1 promoter, isolated from, which is my PCR from genomic DNA, um, and sort of local synthetic terminator already in my, my vector backbone. And then once I had this, this construct complete, I transformed it into two different strains of agrobacterium. Uh, each, each, each of the three different <coughs> curse sets with a different marker genes of two different strains of agrobacterium. And uh, performed the agrobacterium mediated transformation. Um, while I performed this, it, with both the hydromycin and the G418, 
with both strains of Agarac chain, the AGL1, the hypervariant strain, and the GB31A1, the more vanilla strain, I've got many, many sort of antagonistic claims. Um, so I, just to confirm these were genuine transform, unfortunately, it's a gentlemanism. Uh, to confirm the uh, genuine transformants in the upper band on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a, uh, a PCR to amplify the uh, marker genes back out of the, the genomic DNA. However, this, this result could also be any, a result of any sort of remaining contaminating uh, agrobacterium DNA. So the lower band <laughs> was just a PCR from, uh, of a canamycin resistance marker from the, the back phase of the, the cassette I used to, just to check. So although a couple of these appeared contaminated and a couple of the, a few of these, it, it didn't actually, we couldn't amplify this with hydromycin, we couldn't amplify back up the resistance cut. Most of them that could, most of them from the PCR uh, appeared to, to definitely be transformers. Uh, so round up now, please. Right. Yeah, it's like the next one. Supervisor Steve Hayes, everyone else on the university floor, uh, BBSSC for keeping me fed and watered. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>